Aboriginal youth are the fastest growing population in Canada. Keeping steady work is crucial for supporting yourself and your family. And understanding labour laws not only protects you as an employee, but helps create a healthy work environment. Why are some young people nervous about entering the workforce? We know just from looking at a small cohort of First Nations medical students that they encounter racism. Be fearless, be brave. We're all travelers on the road. The obstacles that we face in life sometimes seem so big. Have hope, go after what you want. This video explores three Aboriginal people's journeys, looking at their careers and how labour laws have fit into their lives. I was adopted as an infant. My mom was a single parent and she adopted me and she lived in Edmonton. Then we moved to Rocky Mountain House. In pre-adolescence in uh, small town Alberta in the early mid 80s, you realize pretty quick that it's not that cool to be Aboriginal. And this really caught up with me, I think, when I was uh, 15 and 16 and uh, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know where I came from. I woke up one morning, literally on the street, physically on the street, and I couldn't remember when I had eaten last. I had no money. I was homeless. Uh, I was estranged from my family. None of my friends wanted anything to do with me anymore. And I was getting sick. I called my mom up. I hadn't talked to her in a long time, and I told her, Mom, I'm getting sick. Can you come and get me? And she said no. She said, Rob, do you know where the ADAC Detox Center is downtown? She said, go there. They'll help you. And that's, that was the beginning. That was literally, that was rock bottom. I had nothing left at all. I really started to come out of the depression when I took a treatment program at Poundmaker's Lodge. That's where I really started to reconnect with my Aboriginal heritage. We would start the day with sweetgrass ceremony every day, in a circle ceremony. There were sweat lodges every week. There was a lot of heritage and culture and tradition that were there. And of course, Aboriginal people from all walks of life and from all across Canada were there. That was key to me. It was a reconnection. I really felt like I could now accept myself for being Aboriginal, and it was cool to be Aboriginal. After treatment, I had gone into a halfway house, and I had found work at a gas station. And at that time, they figured I was healthy enough to get it out into my own apartment. And so I, I went into subsidized housing. I've been at the brunt of, of all the common misconceptions about Aboriginal people, the fact that we don't pay taxes and our education is all paid for. And we're just lazy, and that's why we don't have the life that we want, I guess. And none of it is true. It's all completely false. Income taxes for Aboriginal people are a common misconception. You must be a status Indian to be income tax exempt. Work must be done on reserve or for a business situated on reserve. If you work off reserve, you will have to pay income tax. By this time, the, the depression had lifted. Uh, I felt like I was back on my feet and uh, having a good time. I did lose my job, however. When I was on EI, that's when I met my wife. She was my girlfriend for a while. She was pregnant. That was a, a very significant turning point. Uh, growing up without a father was terrible, and I didn't want that for any of my kids. So I made a promise to myself that my kids would always have their father. I never actually dreamed of being an astronomer. I liked science. I loved to read scientific articles and magazines, and I loved documentary shows. But I honestly never thought of myself as being into science or being a science kind of geeky guy. It was literally first year of university. There was a professor there, Dr. Ann Gower. I'll never forget her because she took time to point out things that we still don't know, where science is still grasping at answers. And that really intrigued me that there were still discoveries to be made. To me, it was just fascinating. It was the language of the universe. It really compels me. When you really love something and love to do it, it's not even work. Honestly, 
Some days I come in here and I play with these incredible computers and it's not a job, it's an honor and a blessing to get to do this. Each month there's a new moon and so that's when we would operate the telescope. The first orbit that I fit to the data looked like it could be a potentially hazardous asteroid heading towards us. And of course we were looking for near Earth asteroids, so I was thrilled. I was just over the moon thinking about this asteroid. So I reported it to the Minor Planet Center and I went to bed. The next day I came and I was sitting right here and I got my coffee and I'm sitting there and I downloaded the latest list of comments and I put them up on my screen and there's Cardinal written beside it. It took me five minutes to clue in that this was me, that I had discovered this comment. I grew up in a um, Métis settlement in East Prairie. My parents had just gotten their treaty rights, so we moved to the Woodland Cree First Nations. We never had to worry about food or a place to live. Dad always, you know, was working and where, whatever he could do, and he was a bricklayer contractor, so he was away a lot, but when he was home, he always made time for us. He's a wonderful man. He's my hero. He always told me to not let anybody dictate to me what to do and to be strong and courageous and to go after what I want. And, you know, education was always something that he was always very, felt very strongly about. My mother was a stay-at-home mom all my life. That was really great to experience that. I used to challenge her a lot, but she's a strong woman, very forgiving woman. And uh, I didn't realize that for a long time because you're always fighting with your parents at some point or another, trying to figure out who you are. I did have a child when I was 17 years old. Having my son Joshua definitely made my life have incredible meaning. Brought back my desire to succeed in life, to fight and to go after what I've always wanted to do. So I had him and I did correspondence. All I knew is that I wanted to make good money so that I could take care of us and we would always be financially secure because I was a single mother. I knew that I had to take care of us and the only way to do that was through education. So I got this job working in administration. There was these two older ladies that were there for a long time. I didn't know that the manager was hoping to groom me to take over one of their positions. If you want to put a, a label on it, they were bullies. It was a daily battle dealing with these, these older ladies, a daily battle of deflecting things that they were trying to put on me or blame me for. I just tell, kept telling myself, okay, just be strong, just be strong. You're a strong person, you can do this. One day, the manager called me in and he, you know, sat me down and at that point, you know, this was day after day after day of being criticized and bullied. And I was like, okay, well, after three months, they can't do nothing to me, they can't fire me, so well, I, I make it and I'm going to do this and, you know, I'm going to stick it out. So he sat me down and uh, he couldn't even look me in the eyes. He said, I'm sorry, but there are people here that don't want to work with you and, uh, and we're going to have to let you go. So I sat there and I, and I held back tears and I just shook my head and I said, oh, okay. And he said, you can go clean out your stuff now. People can affect you so, so much in the workplace. And you take it home with you. You do because you, because you can't not take it home with you. You know, those feelings of inadequacy or maybe you feel like you did do something wrong and maybe you could have done something better or done more. And that's how I felt for a long time. Christian, do you want cheese? Yeah. And ham? Yeah. My children are not so small anymore. And my husband's in a different position and he's doing really great. And I started to really do some soul searching and think, okay, what, what is it? What area do you really want to go into? Like what, what part of you know, law would you like to go into? And I came across the Bachelor of Arts in Criminal Justice and I knew that this is what I wanted to do. I'm just going to keep going and, and keep doing the best that I can and chase after my dreams. For a long time, they were put on hold, but that's okay. None of that time was wasted. Those were good, those were good, important times in my life. Your employer has to follow the Alberta Employment Standards Code. If you feel you have been let go unfairly, call the Employment Standards Office to get more information. There is a six-month deadline to make a complaint after you've been terminated. Anita was let go unfairly but you can be terminated from your job with proof of any of the following. Falsified qualifications, sexual harassment, having competing interests like setting up a similar business, 
not following health and safety requirements, theft, fraud, or dishonesty, disrespectful behavior, or refusal to obey instructions. Workplace harassment can be a violation of the Alberta Human Rights Act. Document incidents, stay calm, and remain professional when you are being harassed. Contact the Human Rights Commission to file a complaint. Physical threats are against the law. Threats should be reported to the police. In Alberta, there are no specific laws that protect employees from general workplace harassment. The employers should have policies in place to deal with harassment. My dad's very traditional. And for him, a young man was supposed to learn to work like a man. So my whole early life was trying to learn to work like a man. And it was hard because my dad didn't give me a break. So when I was 17, I moved to Montreal to study biochemistry at McGill University. There were almost no Aboriginal students there. In fact, I don't think I met one. One day while I was walking down the street, a casting agent saw me and said, are you an actor? And I lied completely and said, yes. She said, great, come and audition for me tomorrow. There's this part I'm casting and I can't find anybody. <laughs> so I went in and, and she cast me. And I, I went from being a university student in the sciences to making $5,000 a week. That was a lot of money back then. And I, and I had no idea how to work with money. I had never had money in my life. Lucky for me, when smoke signals came up uh, and I was going to play basically a storyteller, I had thought for years, how do the old people tell stories? And that's what I'm trying to emulate in the movie. During the 60s, Arnold Joseph was the perfect hippie because all the hippies were trying to be Indians anyway. I'm trying to emulate those old time storytellers who just fill the story with life so it's real for the listener. Make love, not war. As I got a little bit older and I realized that being an actor wasn't the end of the world, it was kind of a hollow victory. And so part of me was thinking, well, it's time for you to grow up and do what you always wanted to do, which was to be a doctor, even though I didn't have a lot of confidence. And luckily I had someone who believed in me and they said, of course you can be a doctor. Even though, of course, in my mind I was just an Indian and a bimbo actor. <laughs> they said, you can do it. So I think everybody needs someone who believes in them. I really do. Um, and to remind them, you can do this and, and it will be harder than you ever imagined, but you will have success beyond what you ever imagined. For a while, I was working at a university, helping them train Aboriginal medical students and residents. And almost every single one of our more than 30 Aboriginal medical students and residents said that they had a very painful, racist experience in the workplace. We were stunned. I know that I personally had heard lots of racist things when I was a student, but I thought I was just unlucky. Almost every single one of them said they had had something had happened to them and it made them feel terrible, almost to the point where they wanted to quit. So I say to all Aboriginal workers, and happen one day, an ignorant person is gonna come across you and they're gonna cross you in the workplace and it's gonna be a challenge and you'll have to work it out. Sometimes racism is not handled appropriately through mediation at the workplace. Like all discrimination, you can file a complaint with the Alberta Human Rights Commission. You have one year to make the complaint from the time of the incident. Document the concern. It can lead to an investigation at the workplace. The Alberta Human Rights Act protects an individual from retaliation from the employer, meaning you cannot be punished for filing a complaint. The laws are set up to protect you. You need to be aware so that you have the resources to stand up for yourself. You know when something is being done that's not right to you or to someone else, and you know what to do. It's a uh, knowledge that's going to make you, you know, a sophisticated person. If you're raised in a traditional Aboriginal culture, you will have this, this innate spirituality that you bring to every aspect of your life. And for those of us who were raised in urban centers, for myself, going back to my roots and learning that culture and that traditional stuff, 
is really important to me and I feel that it enriches my life. So what Aboriginal people can bring to the workforce is a holistic type of outlook. I think for young people they don't know what they're capable of until they're pushed through a difficult situation. You can be amazed at what you can do. Think hard about what you want to do. Whatever you're doing, try to do your best at it so you can be proud of it. No matter what has come before, it's never too late to start telling a different story. And you can turn that page and you can change the chapter and you can start doing things that, that you can take pride in. Be proud of who you are. Be fiercely proud. If you're Aboriginal, be proud of that. If you're non-Aboriginal, be proud of that. Find something that you love to do. Find something that you know you're good at and you feel passionate about. That will take you long ways. You will succeed with that. Thank you.